Hey, what's up guys? This is Merc here, and welcome to the how-to video for Windwalker Monks. Now, I'm going to let this duel play out with a bit of music, so you can get an idea of how the fights go. And after that, we're going to take a look at some of the abilities that monks use, how to counter them, what to avoid, what to run the hell away from, etc. And finally, how to beat them in general, and the best way to go about it. One of the major abilities you need to look out for is called Fists of Fury. Now, this is hard to avoid, does a lot of damage, and you can't really trinket it. Now, Fists of Fury is a stun that repeats itself every time the attack lands. Basically, what that ends up doing is keeping you stunned in place for around 5 seconds while you're continuously taking damage. Now, there's not an easy way to avoid this because it stuns anything in front of the monk, directly in front of the monk. It's not actually a targeted ability, it just stuns anything in front of it. The only way to really avoid it and minimize its damage is to have combat readiness up when you think the monk is going to do some burst and try and keep behind the monk as much as you can. Makes it hard to land because they can only channel it in front of them. They can't turn around once they start it. 
One of the other abilities you will have to look out for is called Paralysis. It's basically a sap slash blind type ability where you're stuck in place for four to eight seconds depending on whether it's DR'd or not. You don't necessarily need to worry about it or trinket it because it's not like a monk's going to get a re-stealth or anything, but you just need to be mindful of when it happens, especially if you've got cooldowns happening, in which case you might want to trinket it if you've been leg sweep, but we'll talk about that in a second. Leg sweep is the kidney shot of monks. It's a five second stun that AoEs the same way that Fists of Fury does, and it's the main ability you should trinket, especially if you're getting bursted by the monk. Touch of Karma is an ability that the monk will use when you're doing your burst, chances are, or just at a random time, and it doesn't have a huge cooldown, so you do have to be mindful of it. It'll appear with a little symbol above your head as soon as the monk uses it. It'll put a small debuff on you, a small dot on you, but you don't necessarily need to worry about that. You can cloak it off if you need to get away and re-stealth. Uh, or just run away in general, you can cloak it, but the main thing is just don't hit the monk when it happens. What Touch of Karma does is it reflects any damage you do to the monk back onto you. So basically, don't hit the monk while that's happening, just run away or something, you'll be fine. Speaking of burst, one of the more annoying monk abilities in terms of fighting a rogue, or being a rogue in general, is the tiger minion that they can summon. It's called Zuen the White Tiger. Uh, very hard to miss. It's a giant spiky glowing tiger and basically when that thing comes out it will increase the burst damage that the monk does, increase the damage the monk does in general uh, while it's up. It's similar to a paladin pet except you won't fall out of combat while the tiger's up, so you can't just blind. What I suggest doing is just cloaking, vanishing, and waiting it out. It doesn't have a visible timer, but you can just bail and watch the monk and wait for it to go and then reopen. Speaking once again of burst, when you burst, there's another chance that the monk will pop something called Fortifying Brew. It's essentially a pain suppression or combat readiness type damage reduction effect. It reduces the damage taken by the monk by 20% and also increases the monk's health by 20%. So I guess it's also kind of a last stand type ability. Basically when that happens, just not necessarily stop your damage, but if you are planning on popping Shadow Dance or Shadow Blades, it might be the best time if the monk pops that, unless you're close to a kill, in which case, go ahead. Monks also have a teleport similar to a warlock portal. Now, what the monk I was fighting explained was that most monks will set healing spheres on top of that portal, and when they use it, they'll get healed for around 80k, depending on how many healing spheres they've currently got on the portal. Now, the portal is called Transcendence. Now you can recognize the portal by the little in half invisible monk statuette spirit thing <laughs> it leaves on the ground. So basically the monk will just swap places with that silhouette of itself and continue about its business. Windwalker monks can be kited, but they do have an ability simply called Roll. It allows them to roll, do, do literally a barrel roll through the air, several yards in front of them, probably more like 30 yards in front of them, a fair distance. So it's not that easy to kite them, but it can be done. And we'll talk more about that when we go over the strategy next. Alright, I'm using the spec currently shown on screen for these duels. Now, the best bet with Windwalker Monks is to go directly on the offensive. Pop your damage cooldowns early and go to town. Windwalker Monks 
are good offensively, the same way rogues are. If you put a lot of pressure on them, they won't be able to get their damage off. A lot of their defensive cooldowns can be prevented by using silences like Garrote. And in general, if they can't build up their stacks of Chi, which is a resource they use for damage similar to combo points, they won't be able to do much damage to you. So going on the offensive straight away and forcing them to run away, attempt to heal, port, roll, whatever, prevents them from building up that Chi with offensive attacks. If you have to go on the defensive, that's fine. Windwalker monks have a certain amount of cooldowns. And at opportunities where the tiger comes out and you need to vanish and get away, you can use that opportunity to reset the fight and get back on the offensive once you open uh, and reset. So there are a lot of ways you can go about it, but the main thing is hit them hard and hit them fast. Just burst and do your best not to die in the meantime while you're waiting for your burst. I'd also suggest using blind early in the fight and since it's on a one and a half minute cooldown makes it um, very usable especially if among trinkets you're stunned you've essentially got two full restelts and chances are uh, monks will trinket your shadow dance and shadow blades combination with the trinket and everything going down so yeah, that's how we do it. I hope you've enjoyed this first tutorial Tuesday. Don't forget to hit the video with a like if it helped you. And even hit it with a favorite. Leave me some feedback. It's all very much appreciated. Until next time, guys, this is Merc out. Cheers.